Hello there. Welcome to the Bad Influence Bonfire Night Special. Outside the studio, we're getting ready for a spectacular fireworks display that's all been planned by computer. I'm in review this week, Sonic Spinball on the Mega Drive. Yes, yes, get out, get, yes. And we'll be looking at the beat-em-up phenomenon. Why is it so much fun to make tiny digitised figures beat seven bells out of each other? And I'll be hanging around in cyberspace at the biggest computer graphics show in the world. But first, to design our Bad Influence Firework Display. To do it, I'm going to use a brilliant bit of software. It's called the Firework Display Simulator. I've been playing with this all day, and it's excellent. It's intended, really, for professional firework companies to design displays on and show them to prospective customers. But we're just having fun with it. It's great. Look, there's loads of different fireworks to choose from. They're all in this uh, kind of menu on the left here. It's digitised versions of real fireworks that have been taken from video. And if you imagine this black screen is your night sky, you just pick your firework up with a mouse, say, I want it to launch from here, have a trajectory of, say, that, and explode there. Choose another firework with, that, with the mouse. Say, I want that one to launch from here, go in this direction, and explode there. And then if you just select that and click on beginning, the computer will show you what it looks like. Ooh. Mind you, professional displays, like what ours is going to be, need to work to split-second accuracy. And this software will let me build up our display frame by frame, second by second. So to start with, I want one of those there. And for symmetry's sake, we'll put one over that side as well. I like those waterfalls at firework displays too. So we'll put one of those in. That goes about there. Catherine wheel, perhaps? Yes, why not? One here and one here. And just because I like the look of them, and for no other reason, we'll put one of those there and one of those there. Now the software will let me see what it looks like from the beginning, please. Oh, it's fairly spectacular, I suppose. It's a bit silver, though, isn't it, really? We can change the colour, though. Go nearest the firework that you want to change, click on, and using this colour palette here, we can make that one blue, say, and let's make that one green. Right, what does that look like? From the beginning? No, it's not so bad. But that's only the beginning of the display. Obviously, you don't want everything to happen at once, and this software will let you decide things that you want to happen a little later on. Yeah, OK, after 2.41 seconds, I want something to happen in front of me waterfall here. So we'll pop one of those there, and one of those there. And so, ladies and gentlemen, I give you the Bad Influence Fireworks Display. Spectacular, I'm sure you'll agree. Small but perfectly formed. However, I'm rather proud of my ending, which I've been working on all day. It's Bad Influence in lights. When you've finished your display, if you click on print, the computer will print out all your requirements. So for our display, I need two mines, a waterfall, a fountain, a couple of Catherine wheels, and so on and so forth. It's great software, though. It can do far more than uh, I'm showing you. So I'll load in a display that's been arranged by a professional company called Fantastic Fireworks. And if you live in London, you can see this in Islington tomorrow night. Ah, so, Scotty Furness, <laughs> I've been learning the ancient Japanese art of origami. <laughs> this is my origami sheep, and uh, this is my origami torch, click, yes, and my favourite of all, my origami violet Berlin. Now, after this first cheat, I'm going to be showing you how to make your very own origami motorcycle. So go and get a sheet of comic to fold along with me. This first cheat is for a game that we Japanese people call Loge Lash 2 on the Mega Drive. Simply, on the title screen, hold down up, A and C, and press start. Let them all go, and now you'll be able to ride on any level on the most powerful bike, the Wild Thing 2000. And here's how to make your very own Wild Thing 2000 out of a sheet of comic. Right, first of all, we fold there, like so, and then there, like so, then turn over, tricky bit, and fold there, and then fold there, 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 and there. Ha-ha! The Wild Thing! <laughs> I wish someone would fold him up. This month sees the release of not one, but three brand new Sonic games. Sonic CD on the Mega CD has seven levels, new baddies, and a 3D look to the bonus levels. Then there's Sonic Chaos on the Master System and Game Gear, which are platform games rather along the same lines as Sonic 1 and 2. Then there's Sonic Spinball, a pinball game with a difference. And the actual pinball machine is a grisly invention dreamed up by the evil Dr. Robotnik. Here's Alex, our very own pinball wizard. This is everything you'd expect from a Sonic game. It's got great graphics and great gameplay. The pinball's a nice idea, too. They've really thought about this game. There's some excellent touches in it. I mean, just look at the way Sonic hangs on there. What you've got to do is you've got to bash Sonic, who's the ball in this pinball game, around this pinball table and doing certain puzzles. I've just hit that target, 
and that will drain the slime out of that big tub. And then I can get the emerald inside, which is that blue thing. If you bash the worms, it releases all the little creatures. I must stress how hard this game really is, because half an hour later, I'm still trying to get up that tube. I've done it. Now all I need to do is collect another emerald, and then I'll be able to get onto the boss room. Just got to land in this barrel, and row across. I like the way the levels have been constructed. There's loads put into them, and they link up nicely with the tubes. Just jump in here, and collect the emerald. This one's just as good as Sonic 1 and 2. I think it'd be a big hit for Christmas. This game is bright, colourful and brilliant. I'd definitely buy it. This is a really good idea. There's loads of humour in the game. The characters are really well animated. And so the final scores for Sonic's Pinball. For the first time this series, a game gets a maximum. Both the boys and the girls gave it five out of five. Hi, and welcome to the ultimate showcase in computer graphics, SIGGRAPH 93. My friend on the screen is called the Vector. But more about how he works in a minute. But first, here's what happens when the greatest graphic gurus and our hottest hardware hackers get together for five days of fun. There are zillions of dollars worth of prototypes here. The latest virtual reality technology and the most amazing computer generated pictures you've ever seen. SIGGRAPH is a real serious show for real serious graphics techies. The big names come from all over the world to find out what's newer than new. Hey, what about me? Sorry, pal. My friend the Vactor, or virtual actor, is operated by this contraption called the Facial Waldo. It's a brilliant way of generating real-time animation. These sensors track my mouth, cheeks, chin, and even eyebrows. Then translate them into the computer so that the character appears to be talking. And I can move the vector around on the screen with this mouse. Hello. Most of this year's show seem to be about new ways to enter cyberspace. This system, a lot, works without headsets, mice, or any sensors at all and your whole body appears in cyberspace at once. You can interact with the computer-generated characters because the system can isolate you from the blue background. Help! The computer's stealing my soul! Not really. It's just another way into cyberspace. The computer can tell the shape of my head from the way the laser line is bent. And I'm in good company. This very machine was used to produce the face of the T-1000 in Terminator 2. Hey! Good likeness, and I can view it from any angle. You don't have to come to Anaheim to enter cyberspace. This is Sick Kids, an area of the show set aside for teenage mutant techies who are attempting to produce a cyber montage of America. Copy the whole background, catch that, and stretch it out all the way down. Kids from all over the states are connecting in via the telephone system to transmit pictures and sounds of their neighborhoods. Eventually, the Sig Kids will have a complete library of information about each other to explore. But I'll be exploring another bit of cyberspace using this new device called the Cybertron. The game I'm playing is called Cosmic Debris, and it's not for couch potatoes. Oh, man. Now, if you can stand with your arms up, or just one arm out like this. Okay, I'll drop it down. Biovision is yet another way to get inside the computer. Same thing over here. Okay, Zero, you ready? Okay, on. One, two, three, go. This time I'm wearing very bright reflectors and I'm being filmed by six video cameras. The position of the reflectors can be tracked very accurately by the computer software, and it can use the data to produce a stick image. Finally, the software creates a basketball playing skeleton of me, a bony Cyber Z. This system was used to program the movements of these cyber people, who star in a promotional video for a new hotel in Las Vegas. 
A similar but even more sophisticated system is being used by games company Acclaim to generate amazing pictures like these. But for me, the best and the most natural way of entering cyberspace is, of course, hang gliding. I'm surprised nobody thought of this before. This is Z-Rite for Bad Influence, floating somewhere in cyberspace. Wow, that looks like fun. SIGGRAPH stands for the Association for Computing Machinery's Special Interest Group on Computer Graphics and Interactive Techniques. No wonder they called it SIGGRAPH for short. It's held in a different location every year. Next year it's in July in Orlando, Florida. Flash! Flash! Oh, I'm so scrotty footers. I've got a Japanese pet. Flash! Flash! Ah, hey! It's the fastest Japanese racing tortoise in the world. <laughs> Naughty Flash running away from me like that. <laughs> Japanese people like nothing more than to go down to the traditional tortoise racing stadium on a wet Wednesday in Osaka and cheering their pets round the track. <laughs> now stay there while I do this next cheat. It's for Lotus Turbo Challenge 2 on the Amiga. On the password screen, simply type in Ducks, D U X. And you'll be able to play a hidden game of carnival. Hey! Now then, Flasher, time for your race training. So here we go. Ready, steady, go! Oh, I forgot he only understands Japanese. Hitachi Toshiba Suzuki. Well, all careful! Christmas. The season of goodwill to all men. But also the season where we get completely swamped by beat-em-up games. This is the long-awaited Street Fighter 2 Special Champion Edition on the Mega Drive, which is out this week. A question that foxes lots of people, though, is what makes these games so appealing? Well, despite what politicians and adults will tell you, it is not the violence. These games look good and sound great, but the real hook is the playability, the total control you have over each character. The real skill lies in the so-called special moves, the finger acrobatics required to pull off these moves more quickly than your opponent. For example, one of chun Li's special moves is a 180-degree rotation of the joypad, pressing any punch button, like that. Oh. Exactly. And different punch buttons will give you different speeds of fireballs and different levels of attack in the fireball. Nowadays, of course, lots of fight games have got these features, but most of them have missed the real point. In Street Fighter 2, all the characters are different. They've been cunningly designed to have strengths and weaknesses. So finding a character whose tactics best suit your style of play is after fun. Mind you, there's nothing as satisfying as pulling off a spectacular triple combination and stunning your opponent into defeat. It's brutal. It's also very hard. This Christmas sees loads of beat-em-ups coming out across all the formats. Remember those turtles? Well, the Naughty Ninjas have just been resting. Their latest game is a one-on-one -on -one beat -em up called Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Tournament Fighters. They both look lovely on the SNES and the Mega Drive, although the Mega Drive boys look slightly tougher. This is tough enough on the SNES, and it has an interesting feature, a video replay option. So when you get to the end of your bout, you can wind it back and watch your victory or defeat in slow motion. Oh, look at that move. Yes! Body Blows 2 Galactic is one of the few computer beat-em-ups. Danny and Junior have to face ten of the fiercest fighters in the world, from dinosaurs to a warrior made entirely out of flames. We've had cartoon characters, we've had digitised video characters, now we've got clay characters. Clay Fighter is probably the weirdest fight game you will ever see. The eight characters are all made out of clay and have been animated and filmed one frame at a time. And they have got some weird special moves. The Blob, for example, can turn himself into a boot to stomp on you, into seven fists for close-up pummeling, and can even trap you inside himself so you can see your own arms wriggling around. Weird. Alien Breed 2 is the sequel to one of the best-selling Amiga games ever. You join the interplanetary core on a mission to rescue a space colony which has been overrun by all sorts of mutant beasties. You won't find Ripley here. This has nothing to do with Aliens the movie. Here's Matthew. The original Alien Breed was one of my favourite games, but this one's a lot better. It's certainly faster. This game's designed to be played by two players and it's much better if you do. I will make... Oh, that was Katie that just died there. We're just trying to collect a key from here and now we've got to rush back down to the bottom. As you can see, the scrolling is very smooth. We've, got a, we've only got a certain time, and that buzzing means our time's running out. Katie just died there again. I'd give this game five out of five. If you like shoot swimps, you'll love this one. I thought this game was a bit dull. The graphics are good, but all the levels look the same. 
This is an excellent game with great graphics and sound. Unfortunately, it's a little bit hard to get to grips with. And the scores for Alien Breed 2, the girls gave it an average score of 3 out of 5. The boys won better, 4 out of 5. Let's play tennis. Jimmy Connor's tennis was a hit on the SNES, and now it's out on the links. You can play championship matches against a computer, or you can take on a friend. So it's over to the centre court for Wright versus Marsh, and it's Miss Marsh to serve. To play against a friend, you need one of these cables which joins the two linkses together. I've got a different viewpoint from Ben. I'm the one moving around. This is what it looks like from where I'm standing. I can see Sarah moving at the top of the screen. Prepare to be thrashed. I think not. Love, 40. Here I'm 40 Love Down, and I'm serving to save the game. It's really hard to serve because you've got to time it perfectly. We're watching the game from my viewpoint. You can choose between a hard or grass court. We're playing on the hard court. To be really sure of hitting the ball, you've got to stand around the yellow square. You've got to really persevere with this game because it's so hard. I'd recommend this. It's brilliantly realistic. But it takes a while to get into it first. At least that's Sarah's excuse. I'll let you win. This is one of the best tennis games I've ever seen. Game. If you've got a Lynx, then buy it. This is an excellent game with great graphics and sound. Unfortunately, it's a little bit hard to get to grips with. This is the best sports game I've ever played on a handheld. And the scores for Jimmy Love. Connors Tennis, Fifteen. both the girls and the boys, gave it a very good four out of five. Hasso Scotty Fertilers. I am an expert in the little-known Japanese martial art of Tai Pin. I will demonstrate on my assistant, Nissan. Hi -o. Oh, yeah. The difference between typing and other martial arts is that it only works on stuffed animals who don't know the special moves. And this is a cheat for Street Fighter 2 Turbo on the SNES that lets you turn the special moves on or off in a versus battle. Simply take controller 2 on the handicap screen and press down, R, up, L, Y and B. A special options screen will appear allowing you to turn the special moves off and on at will. And now, some typing special moves. Okay, we're just about ready for our bad influence fireworks display. Our fireworks expert, Jeremy Finch, has got them all wired up to go off in the right order, but they're actually going to be triggered by the computer, and the computer is in here. It's that box of tricks on the left that does it. It will set off the igniters to ignite the fireworks in the correct sequence as instructed by the computer. And we've got a demo sequence loaded to show how it works. Watch the screen, you'll see the computer firework go off at the same time as the igniter, all being well. Well, that seems to be working. So now we just check with Jeremy that our fireworks are all ready. Everything's set up. Everything's ready. Brilliant. So all now I've got to do is load up our bad influence display. Three, two, one, go. Amazing! If you want to win the Data Blast, set your videos recorders now. Last week's competition was to win a copy of Jurassic Park and a SNES. The question was, whew, what was the name of the era before the Jurassic era? The answer was Triassic, and the lucky winner is Anthony Simpson from Lancashire. Well done. Ten lucky runners up get bad influence t-shirts as well. This Woo. week's competition prize is a Mega Drive with Sonic Spinball. And the question is, what year was the gunpowder plot when Guy Fawkes tried to blow up the Houses of Parliament? Call us with your answer on 0891 700 100. The court will cost you no more than 25p, but get permission from whoever pays the bill before you phone, please. Lines will stay open until midnight on Monday. Isn't this brilliant? And if you have your fireworks pod, whoop, if you have your fireworks pod tomorrow night, don't forget, be safe. Use the firework code. Have a happy and safe bonfire night. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.